So for the next feature, I've actually joined a call with my friend Andrew Famera, who is a longtime Go Rails member. And we're gonna build a feature and kind of pair program together because this is something that uh, you code with other people all the time. And I thought it'd be fun to basically enhance this course and do um, some coding not by myself. So, hey, Andrea, how are you? <laughs> hey, I'm good, Chris. How are you doing this afternoon? Doing good. Um, so to get you up to speed with what we built so far, we've built a new Rails app. We built two pages, navigate between the two, and that is about it. Um, and probably the first thing we should do is talk about Git. Yes. So have you made a have you made your first commit yet? Or I have not. So why don't um, we do a Git status to check that out? Yes. So Git is um, a version control system for your code. So I guess the way to explain that is when you're making changes, you often end up with, you know, your boss has like four different projects you need to work on. And so Git helps you manage basically doing those four projects kind of simultaneously. And you can also keep track of old changes. Like we're on Bootstrap 5 now, but when we make a change in the future, we might break something with Bootstrap and want to look back and see how did we set that up? And this is a really good way of keeping track of those changes. So Andrea, uh, how would you go suggest we make our first commit? Because we've written some code. We probably should have made a code bef uh, a commit of our code right after Rails created, but we made some changes to it um, because we're trying to learn Rails more than we're trying to learn Git. So what would you suggest we do now? I'd say we can go ahead and just add everything we've done up to this point into one big commit, and then from there we start being careful about committing often um, so that it's a little bit easier in the pat like later down the road that we can follow what we've done. So if we go step by step uh, after this point, like let, we can just do one big commit now. So you can go ahead and do like git add dot to add all of the files. But yeah, if you didn't want to do git add dot, you could have specified a file and you could you can or a directory and it would add everything within that. So yeah. like you can you have a little bit of control there when you add stuff. And and the dot is the current directory, but also everything inside of it. So all those files that you see now in git status that are green instead of red are now in a staging area where we know we want to add them to our commit, but we can go make other changes and remove some of these things if we decided we didn't want them. Um, but I guess for now, let's just go and create our first commit. And we can do that by saying git commit dash m and a message. So the dash M is specifying the message. And we say initial commit because it's really all we did. Just set up our Rails app and that was it. So if we run that, we get our commit and we're done. And our git status now is going to show nothing has changed since the last commit. So maybe now is a good time to go add some a feature. What do you think? Yeah, let's, let's add features. So do you want to work on flash messages, which would be a good like demonstration of this? Yeah, um, let's maybe go into the controller and talk about flash messages. So this flash, um, I guess it's a it's probably a method, not a variable. Um, this doesn't really it just kind of comes out of nowhere, but it's inherited from application controller, so it's a feature of your Rails controllers and views but you can use flash and use it like a hash in Ruby. So we give a, a name to our key and say notice and assign a message to it, say um, logged in successfully. And that's gonna store this in the flash hash object. And we can also add any other type that we would want in here, but most of the ones that you'll see are alert and notice. And this would be for something that um, failed, for example, invalid email or password when you're logging into your account. So um, these you can be assigning in the controller, but then you need to actually print them out somewhere in your HTML so the user can see them. Otherwise, this isn't going to do anything useful at all. So I guess uh, the next step is we should go and create a partial in our layout because the flash messages are shared 
basically across your entire application. So putting them in your layout makes sense. It's a single place you can have it. And we can go into shared folder and add a flash uh, partial there. And we can go into the sh app views shared folder, add our flash.html.erb, and we can just print those out. So if we say flash notice here, just like we did in the controller, um, we can reference the value and print them out just like so in our view. And now we can see them when we refresh the page. And if we go to any of these routes, we're going to see that now because they are being rendered um, and reassigned every time that this code runs here in the main controller. Then the next piece is really we want to style these because the notice is something that is for like successful things that happen. And so we probably want those to be like a friendly color like blue or green. And our alerts are for things that failed. And so those generally are something you want red or orange so that they kind of denote um, something didn't work. So we can use the, um, the div class alert from Bootstrap and give it a color of alert info, which will be uh, blue and a margin top of four. And we can wrap the notice in that. And we can do the same thing for the alert and make this one the alert warning. And if you aren't familiar, you can look up the alerts in Bootstrap and see here's all the color options you have. So we're gonna use this blue one, or no, the info alert, this light blue one, and the warning, warning. this this yellow or orange one. And so, so now, if we refresh. You also, you also want to add a roll of alert to those so that things pr function properly. Yeah, so for a lot of the um, accessibility stuff, it's good to have the roll on them, and you'll see that throughout the docs in bootstrap for all that. So we'll go add that role and you can always reference the bootstrap docs for those. Um, and yeah, now we have that working successfully, but you'll notice here we have the alerts being set on home um, and the persist across to about because they get assigned, but then also stay as a cookie, I believe for the next request. So basically when you submit a form, like you try and log in, it might redirect you and you still want the message to display. So it actually keeps it for two requests instead of just one. Um, so it, it works a little bit different than you would expect because we're not using it like you would trying to show it off here. But here's something interesting. These are still displaying even though there's no message. So what's going on there? Yeah, so we are rendering that partial no matter what and the partial is rendering out an empty variable basically right like it's it, the partial that we have if you go to the shared flash partial mm -hmm. it is just going to render out that div no matter what and so it's kind of doing like this this is kind of what's happening there's like no notice but it's still going to print out the div right right and then since since the notice isn't there it's just empty so and one useful trick that I like to do is do a dot inspect. Um, you might do an inspect in your Ruby um, IRB session or something, and it will actually print out the value of it. In your HTML, it's just going to display nothing if it's nil. But if we do an inspect, it's actually going to print out the word nil. And that's actually what the Ruby value of notice is. So that's a useful tip to debug. If you think something should be printing out, but it's not, you can use the inspect in your, in your views. So how should we fix this? You know, the simplest solution is to just wrap everything in, in an if tag. Okay. We can check if, if we need flash to use, notice is present. And we need to use an ERB tag for this. We can't just write a regular if as if we we're in a Ruby file because we're in in ERB, we have to make sure that all of our Ruby code goes inside of these greater than percent. And you'll notice, I guess, um, let me finish this real fast, but you'll notice that our if and our end doesn't have an equals, but this one does. 
And that just means that this line of Ruby code, we don't want to print out the return value of that in the HTML. And we want to specify the equals when we do want that printed out. And so that's why we have the percent greater than percent equals on this line and line eight. So I guess we'll do the same thing down here for alert. Awesome. And and that should make those alert boxes disappear on the about page. There we go. So they show up here, but they disappear on the about. But the second time that we visit that, because uh, our controller is setting a flash notice and alert that they wait until they're actually rendered on like the next request before they remove themselves. And they, they persist one time. But we can also do the flash.now to only display it on the current request. So what's kind of cool is now that will fix our issue where we set the flash, but we don't persist it in a cookie for the next request, and it will only work uh, on the current page as we render that. This isn't something you use very often, um, but you're also not setting the flash just arbitrarily anyways. So that's just an example of the flash that uh, is going to be really useful through our, throughout our app. Yeah. And then in VS Code, one of the cool things that it does is it actually monitors your Git. So you remember that all of these files were green before in the previous video, but now that we've made a commit, all of them have turned white except for the ones we've changed. And it says M for modified and U for new files that we've added. So the new files are green, and it will highlight the folders above and keep track of that visually for you, which is kind of nifty. So you don't have to run git status in your terminal all the time. You can just look at that and check the colors. So what should we do to make a commit for this new feature that we've added? So you can go ahead and do, you, you want to add files that you want to stage to for your commits. So mm -hmm. to add a file, you can do git add, and then you can specify the path of the file. Um, that's so, one example. So that's very similar yeah. to what we're doing. So like if you wanted to, you could do git add uh, app slash views slash layouts application dot html dot erb. Mm -hmm. And so that's one way, right? The other way is you can use dash p instead, and, and then you can go in hunks. Yeah, and it will kind of look through that entire file. If you maybe added three things in that one file, you could grab those individual pieces that you want and actually split them into like two commits. If you actually, if you went overboard and you added two features at once, this is really handy to pick out one at a time. And then the other thing is um, we have this brand new file which is not tracked by Git currently and it, that's why it's under untracked files. So we have to do a Git add and the file name for that in order to add that file. But now we should see everything ready to be committed and we can add commit and say add flash messages or something like that. And there we go. So now our git status is clean. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, all of our files are gray again and we don't have any new changes. So that was pretty cool. Um, it's The flash is a really useful tool. Like it's a pretty neat um, feature of Rails that I, when I first learned about it, I was like, oh, this is pretty handy because now I can just set a message and it just gets displayed and uh, just disappears after the next request. So kind of a cool feature, I thought. Yep, totally agree. So um, I guess that's it for this video and we will be back in the next one because we probably need to start adding some useful features. Right now we have navigation and some very basic things, but we can start using the flash messages by adding, say, user registration next.